of importing the stuff. In his ruling today, the community secretary, Sajid Javid, spoke of the national need for shale gas exploration. It's clearly still a priority the government feels cannot weigh local objections. Carlden in ITV News at the Communities Department in Westminster. Pauline Kafaki, the nurse who was infected with the Ebola virus while working in Africa, has been taken to a Glasgow hospital under police escort. It's the third time she's been readmitted since her return from Sierra Leone back in 2014. Well, our Scotland correspondent Peter Smith is outside the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital for us this lunchtime. Peter, what more do we know about her condition? Well, we know that Pauline Kafferke went to work as normal this morning. She is a nurse at a medical practice in Lanarkshire. She reported feeling a high temperature and was immediately given a police escort to this hospital in Glasgow. Now, I've heard from her relatives that this is not related to Ebola. It's, she's been treated for a, a, a lesser infection. But this response, this police escort, is entirely understandable when you consider her medical background. She is, of course, the nurse who went to Sierra Leone in 2014 to try and fight Ebola but contracted the virus herself. She's suffered two relapses. On those occasions, she's had to be flown to London's Royal Free Hospital for treatment. She was taken in an RAF Hercules on those occasions. It's also my understanding tonight there is no RAF Hercules scheduled to take her out of Glasgow to London yet and uh, the NHS here are saying her condition is stable and this is procedural but um, she is of course now facing a, a, a bleak future where anytime she's suffering any increase of temperature, any illness at all, that she will be taken back to hospital and she will be treated with the utmost sensitivity and care. Peter, thank you. To Syria now, where there are signs this lunchtime that government troops may be about to advance into the rebel-held area of Aleppo. People in the east of the city have faced heavy airstrikes for the past fortnight as President Assad tries to wrestle back control. Well, all this week, we're keeping a daily count of the bombing. On Tuesday alone, there were eight airstrikes in the city, resulting in the deaths of 32 people. Well, our correspondent, Emma Murphy, is here for us. Um, Emma, can you give us a sense of what's happening there right now? Well, we understand from um, those we're in touch with on the ground and also from information that's coming from official government, Syrian government sources, that the ground assault is very much underway. They are making significant gains in parts of eastern Aleppo. They have now started warning those who are staying there that they need to leave or, in the words of the regime, accept their inevitable fate. There has also been um, reports that helicopters have been flying over parts of eastern Aleppo dropping leaflets. There's also been text messages sent that suggest that people who are within the city need to raise the regime flag to make their position clear and then hand themselves in to the regime. Now, obviously, that is an extremely significant moment because we've seen this air assault over the past um, days. 376 people killed in just two weeks, over 2,200 uh, injured. Um, that was widely seen as an attempt to break down resistance, break down that particular part of eastern Aleppo ahead of a ground offensive. And it is quite clear now that that big push is underway. Well, thanks very much, Emma. Oh, don't forget, there's lots more on the situation in eastern Aleppo on our website. That's at icefeed.com slash news. Click on the Siege of Aleppo image. Still to come, a heartbroken mother's open plea to stop online bullying. And is time running out for the toad? The study suggesting they are in dramatic decline. But first, Florida residents have been told to prepare for a direct hit from Hurricane Matthew after it pounded the Bahamas and devastated parts of Haiti. It's already swept across the Caribbean and is now expected to strengthen as it travels across the ocean towards the United States. Evacuation orders have been issued along the coast amid warnings the damage could be catastrophic. Jenny Longdon has the latest. Surveying the damage left behind by Hurricane Matthew. Homes destroyed, schools ruined and belongings scattered. In Haiti, people have resorted to cooking and sleeping outside. The number of dead in the Caribbean has now risen to at least 39. But the exact toll is unknown as rescue workers struggle to reach areas that have been cut off. The United Nations say at least 350,000 people need immediate help. In Cuba, residents have returned home to see what is left of their neighbourhoods. 
We were evacuated, says this woman. And when the sun came up today, I came out and here was this disaster. I went to my brother-in-law's house and it was turned over. The storm has now reached the Bahamas, pounding the palm trees in speeds of 125 miles per hour as it moves towards the United States. Two million people have been advised to evacuate coastal areas. If you live in a low-lying area, if you live on a barrier island, or if your area is prone to flooding, get out. Don't wait for an order, get out now. People in Florida are stocking up on food and fuel as the hurricane approaches. At this bar, residents say all they can do is hope for the best. I'm just afraid if the roof goes off, what's going to happen? I'm going to feel like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. It's going to be tough, but this is what we do down here. This is why we are able to enjoy this paradise that we deal with this stuff every now and then. But this is the damage Hurricane Matthew has caused so far. Residents in Florida have been warned a direct hit there could be catastrophic. Jenny Longdon, ITV News. Our correspondent Martin Geisler is in Palm Beach. Um, Martin, it does look quite calm where you are. Well, it's reasonably calm just now, but the first outer bands of this storm are expected to hit in the next couple of hours, bringing heavy rain and high winds. But the real impact is due in about 12 hours from there. That's when Hurricane Matthew is due to make land, possibly right here in West Palm Beach. It, as you saw, it hit the Bahamas last night. It was Category 3 there. It's picking up speed now. It's picking up intensity. It's due to be Category 4 when it hits here. What does that mean? Well, winds of 145 miles per hour, and that's the steady wind speed. Gusts of up to 160 miles an hour. It's going to be very destructive. And as you saw, people are starting to realize that this is going to be extremely real. Uh, Florida State Governor Rick Scott laid it on the line a couple of minutes ago in a press conference. He said, prepare as if your lives depend on it. Evacuate, he said. This storm will kill you. Uh, he said if it makes a direct hit, there'll be destruction like we've never seen before. Uh, he said he's activated 2,500 members of the National Guard. 4,000 more are on standby. He wouldn't be doing that, he said, if it wasn't extremely serious. A small deviation either way could really vary the intensity of this. But the next 24, perhaps 36 hours are going to be extremely testing for this whole stretch of the Atlantic coast of South Florida. Martin, thank you. A mother whose son took his own life after years of relentless bullying has written an open letter appealing for people to be kinder to one another. Felix Alexander stepped in front of a train in April, aged just 17. He'd been bullied at school and online since he was 10. Today, his mother Lucy pleaded with adults and children to do more to stop abuse. I desperately need to raise awareness. I desperately need for people to talk about this, to talk to their children, for ch teachers to train, for parents to, you know, guide their children through all this stuff that they find and look at. Well, I'm joined now by Claude Knights, who's the CEO of anti-bullying organisation Kidscape. Well, let's talk about this letter that Lucy Alexander wrote. She spoke about the unkindness and isolation that Felix was experiencing, which then intensified when it came to, to social media. Is that something that you recognise? I found the letter so harrowing and, in fact, it really reflects so many cases that we've dealt with at Kidscape over many years and the calls to our helpline. About, you know, 10 to 14 young people end in this disastrous situation of, you know, of taking their own lives. Yes, the isolation, the unkindness, and social media exacerbates it, of course, because there's a kind of disinhibition. Some young people talk about seeing the, ski, the, the, the screen as a kind of protection and don't often realise that, that that unkindness and that real sort of um, uh, almost um, verbal yeah. abuse is, is absolutely hitting someone in, in the heart and destroying them. Well, he's, you know, she had said that she had spoken and mentioned the, mm. the issue of, of, of suicide to, to Felix and had spoken about the fact that teachers need to pay more mm. attention to the signs. Mm. What sort of signs mm. should they and parents be looking for? One of the great problems, of course, is that young people put so much effort into hiding what they're going through because perhaps they feel ashamed or they just don't want, don't want to talk about it or admit it. So we have to be very, very vigilant. One of the signs, of course, is a change in temperament or character. If your child is usually outgoing and suddenly 
the teacher and the parent notice that he or she is withdrawn and perhaps, in a sense, uncharacteristically quiet and so on. That, yeah. that would be a reason perhaps to ask questions. But of course, if it's happening in adolescence, that is also yeah. very much a part of adolescence. Now, Lucy Alexander also spoke about, spoke to the bullies mm. themselves. I mean, how is a parent supposed to know or what signs should they be looking for if they think their child may well be the person that's mm. actually doing the bullying? Mm. Of course, I mean, for the, for the parent of a bully, there is also a red alert because that, it's a dysfunctional thing to do. There, 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 are co there are reasons for why a child will bully and they may also be victims in another setting. But it is important to monitor your child's online life. We always say at Kidscape, be part of your child's yeah. online life. And that doesn't mean sort of cramping their style completely, but be aware. For mm -hmm. instance, are they on Facebook under 13, which they shouldn't, you know, yeah. they shouldn't be and so on. Absolutely. Well, Claude, thank you so much oh, for talking to us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, actually, Claude will be staying with us to answer your questions on what you can do if you or someone you know is being bullied. Well, you can join her now on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash ITV News. Last ditch talks to avert strike action on Southern Railway have collapsed without agreement, meaning the walkouts will go ahead. Members of the RMT have planned a series of strikes in a bitter row over the role of conductors. The first is due to take place next week. And a major security drill ahead of England's cricketers' first a game in Bangladesh has taken place in Dakar. There have been concerns over safety in the country with Captain Morgan, with Captain Ian Morgan and batsman Alex Hales both pulling out of the tour that follows a terrorist attack on a cafe in July which killed 22 people. This week on the ICV Lunchtime News, we've been reporting on the impact cancer has on children and young people. Every day, seven more are diagnosed with the disease and many have needs that are particular to their age. Well, today we've been given special access to the Teenage Cancer Care Trust's ward at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. Victoria Grimes reports on the challenge of treating those growing up with cancer. Uh, my third year project is basically it's called Saving Oneself. Here, the priority is fighting cancer, but it doesn't mean that life, study and friends outside chemotherapy appointments aren't still important. Hi, Kylie. Do you like mm -hmm. Do you mind if we do your blood pressure? Thank you. The word cancer's enough to instill fear in anyone, but for young people in particular, a diagnosis can be particularly isolating. Sophie was just 16 when she was told she had Hodgkinson's lymphoma. I was really scared because I didn't know what was going to happen at the start. I didn't know whether I was going to get through it. Um, and I didn't know what chemo was going to be like. So I was scared. Sophie's having treatment on a specialist teenage cancer trust ward. They're designed to feel like a home from home and a place where young cancer patients can feel some sense of normality. At the moment, the charity treat around half of the two and a half thousand youngsters diagnosed every year, but they want to help them all. And so they're piloting a scheme which would see specialist nurses working within their community so young people can be treated closer to home. We know that every young person that comes through the door brings a different set of challenges or a, a unique set of needs and it's about being confident and well equipped to meet those needs and that's what the extra nurses will be able to do. No other hospital does things like this and I think it would I would be in a completely different mindset if I was somewhere else it is just like being at a community centre or something it's not like a hospital well, the charity is hoping they can now help even more young people like Sophie to face their cancer Victoria Grimes ITV News Finally, toads could very well disappear from our countryside because their numbers are in such steep decline. Immortalised in the wind in the willows as the eccentric Mr Toad, numbers have been, dro have been dropping by more than two-thirds in the past 30 years. Martha Fairley is at Fendrayton in Cambridgeshire for us this lunchtime. Martha. Well, these kind of deep waters are ideal breeding ground for the common toad, but as we've heard, their numbers are in serious decline. Well, with me is Dr. Silvio Petrovan from the wildlife charity Frog Life, and also with him is a Buffo Buffo, otherwise known as the common toad. Now, um, Dr. Petrovan, uh, why is their number in such decline? Well, it's going to be for a 
whole range of reasons, we suspect, simply because the numbers that we've looked at in terms of populations are huge. So we've incorporated 153 populations from the entire UK, uh, which suggests that actually there's going to be various factors affecting toads in various places. But as suggestions, we think increases in road traffic are definitely an important contributing factor. There's potentially um, habitat degradation and habitat fragmentation, but also there are uh, discussions about how climate change might in fact be impacting common toads. And I mean, they have a reputation for being a bit warty, a bit ugly, um, but why are they so important? So. Well, they're very important parts of our of our ecosystems and if you think about it in terms of the fact that the declines, these 68% declines that we've estimated involve hundreds of thousands of individuals that have been lost from the countryside, you can easily imagine that actually losing such a huge number of, uh, of animals is going to have ripple effects throughout the ecosystem. They will have eaten millions of slugs and worms and beetles and also lots of species eat the toads themselves. Okay, well, thank you very much. Well, thank there you. are various things that we can do to help them. There are patrols during the spring to help toads across the road, but perhaps uh, conservationists are suggesting we also need to look at changing habitats and creating extra links to help toads when they're migrating from and to their breeding grounds. Martha, thank you. Before we go, a reminder of our main story this lunchtime. UKIP MEP Stephen Wolfe is in a serious condition in hospital. He collapsed after an altercation at the European Parliament building in Strasbourg. Interim leader Nigel Farage confirmed he was there when it happened. That's it from us this lunchtime. I'll be back with Mark Austin with the evening news at 6.30. The news where you are follows the weather. But for everyone here, goodbye.